Hello there, I'm Barry Robinson for Scarborough TV News. Now we're out and about in Pickering. We've come to the Pickering Memorial Hall to see the Scarborough District Model Railway Club's show that's been held in here today. It's a very big show, it's a great show, and there's loads of people, loads of stalls, loads of trains. So I think we ought to go inside and have a quick look. Are you coming? I'm now with Mike Johnson. He's the chairman of the Scarborough District Railway Modellers Club. Wow, Mike. Correct. Well yeah. done, Barry. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a bit of a mouthful. Absolutely. So here we are. How many years has this been going at the uh, Memorial Hall in Pickering? Um, well, it's, there has been a show at the Memorial Hall for quite some time, but um, we've done about the last 10 years, really, we've, uh, we've organised it here. So uh, that's our responsibility because um, the, there were some changes at the club and some members left and some joined and uh, the modern shows as we call them now about 10 years so mike when we have a look around the show today what are we going to see well hopefully you're going to enjoy all the models here what you're going to see is uh, several different layouts depicting uh, different scenes uh, you'll be able to uh, see and speak to our demonstrators who are demonstrating modeling techniques and uh, if you did want to put your hand in your pocket we also have the traders here you should be able to buy anything that you need here for the railway modelers and um, if they haven't got it then they can get it for you uh, and the demonstrators they'll also be on hand to uh, to show you how to actually do the modeling and uh, show various techniques on, uh, on um, weathering and uh, demonstrations on buildings and things like that. Mike, do you have a railway layout at home? I bet you have. Is it under the bed though? Uh, no, it's not under the bed. Um, I wouldn't be allowed. <laughs> but um, I, I do have a layout, but it's in bits and pieces at the moment. My main focus is on the on the club layouts. So uh, we've got several layouts building at the club, uh, and I contribute to those. Um, get, very rarely get a, a chance to uh, to indulge myself in my own layout. Um, but um, hopefully, by the time you speak to me, perhaps next. Next year, uh, there might be something in the pipeline. Hopefully. Okay, Mike. So I think it's about time we had a look round this marvellous exhibition okay. of the Scarborough District Railway Modellers Club. Now with Tony Wright. Now, Tony, you are a big railway modeler enthusiast and you've written for magazines as well. Yes, I have. Yeah, so what was the magazine you've written for? I used to be assistant editor photographer for British Railway Modeling, but I retired a couple of years ago and I still write articles and take product shots for them. Yeah, so is it anything in particular you write about or is it in general railway stuff? It's how I make the models. I do reviews of, of models and I build models. Somebody will make a kit, so I will assemble the kit and wow. write a report on it. How long does it take you to make a model? Depends on the size. A big Pacific, that's a 462, takes about 40 hours. Now here we are in the Memorial Hall at Pickering yes. and you've got a little display for children. Every show needs one of those. Yeah. It's marvellous, it's really good. Oh. You press a big red button yes. and the train goes. And the goes. train goes round yeah. and it doesn't fall off. Yeah. And it doesn't matter that it's not dead scale. But I mean, these are, what you see here, fantastic achievements. But every show needs one of those. Right, well it's great to see you. Thank you very much for having a chat. Not at all. I'm now with Bob Dawson. Now Bob, this is the smallest model railway layout I've ever seen. Right, it's 27 so. inches long, 11 inches high, and seven inches deep. Wow. And, and it's just to show what you can do in a small space. Yeah, it isn't like a circle, is it? It's just no, like a little just, bit. Yeah, it's just a very tiny little bit of a a yard. small shunting yard at the end of a branch line. So what is this end gauge? This is end gauge. Which yeah, so why the small end gauge? Because that's the size that would look good without overcrowding the box, yeah. allowing you uh, areas to create the scenery and create the depth. If you, if you look into it, it looks as though you can see doesn't it, into the distance. And, my road starts here, it goes all the way down, and actually joins the back scene. Yeah. There. So, how long have you been doing this? 
modelling uh, 50, about 50 years now. I'm 67, so I've been doing it about 50 years now. 50 years, wow. Yeah. How long does it take you to do this? This is about six months' work. Six months, yeah. wow. I think it's fantastic. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Well done. Well, as you can see, I'm with Ian Harper, a very good friend of Scarborough TV News. Now, Ian, we are at Rumbling Bridge. Tell us all about this model. Well, it actually it isn't my model. It belongs to one of our members. And... Um, it uh, represents a particular place in Scotland in the late 50s, early 60s, just before it closed to, to the railways, uh, when Dr Beecham closed all the railways down. Was it actually called Rumbling it Bridge? It was called Rumbling Bridge, yeah. and uh, the owner of the layout, Nick Skelton, has actually been up to the actual place in question and taken photographs, and these houses built now where the station was and the road where the track was. How do you connect up the trains, the actual track? The tracks, yeah. the, the, the tracks are connected up with, on each board there are two pins yeah. and on the other board there are two sockets set into the, into the baseboard. Do you use little fish plates to connect the tracks no, together? No, no. You don't? No, not on this particular one. All the track is handmade. Yeah. Handmade? Nick has made all the points, he's made all the track. Well that is truly outstanding. Oh, it, it, it's, um, I, I just it can't believe how you it. could make track like that. It's, that it's is clever. so superb. I mean, at the moment, he's, on, he's now deciding he's going to build another layout yeah. at our club rooms at Scarborough. And uh, knowing Nick, it will be finished in double quick time. He can certainly get the layouts put together very quickly. I'm now with Gary Norman. Now, Gary, tell us all about your trams to town. Right, the trams to town, um, they're based on the funiculars that you see around Scarborough. Going back in time, we had five systems there, and uh, I'd looked at them once or twice and decided um, I wanted to do something in the garden, make a garden railway, but living in a terraced house, no space, and so I thought that's an ideal candidate, so we had a go at it, my father and I looked at what we could do, and uh, in funicular terms, it's quite shallow. You go to the Scarborough ones, and they can be quite steep. There's, they yeah. are steep, yes. Yeah. That was the thing with funiculars, they were built to go in a specific location, so no two were alike. Of the five systems in Scarborough, a couple of them were built by the same company, yet not one part is common. You can't take one car and stick it on another. So um, you've got quite a lot of leeway with it, and because nobody else had modelled one that I could find, um, I had as much licence as I wanted. So I took bits and pieces from all five systems, cobbled them together, and uh, this is what you see today. It's taken about 10 years work, and they always say a model railway's never finished. And um, believe me, it's, it's correct. I'm already planning next year's upgrades for it, and uh, we just keep, uh, we keep going. Well, we had a great time here at the Memorial Hall in Pickering for the annual Scarborough District Model Railway Exhibition. It's here two days in August, Saturday and Sunday, so I think it's about time we hopped on a train and went back to Scarborough. From me, Barry Robinson, bye for now.